Welcome back to our supersized at issue. Andrew, Chantal, Shachi, and Paul all with me this evening in Toronto. We've been talking about how the Liberals have been doing. Now let's talk about the other guys, the Conservatives and the NDP. So we're going to break it down uh, between the four of you. Paul, let's start with uh, what has been an unusual summer for the Conservatives, uh, I think largely because of Maxime Bernier. Yeah. Uh, has that damage them in any way uh, that we maybe don't see? Or, or is it sort of unknown at this point? I think it has reinforced a little bit of grumbling to the effect among Conservatives that Andrew Scheer is not running a real Conservative party. A little bit like what we heard in Ontario for Patrick Brown mm -hmm. before he got hoisted out of the, that job. Um, um, in practical uh, terms, it probably isn't going to make much uh, effect at all. The, 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 the fundraising numbers that Maxime Bernier is bragging about are trivial compared to the Conservatives, which are the biggest fundraising party in the country. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he, he had a... Um, he, he drummed up a spokesperson who, who said on his behalf that they, were, they might be able to pull away, away as many as three MPs from the Conservative caucus. First of all... I'll believe it when it happens. Secondly, <laughs> three's not a large number. No. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think it's a distraction on the scale of Belinda Stronach when she left Stephen Harper's Conservative Party uh, before he became Prime Minister. So what, so what is the state of that party then heading into the fall? Because we are like about, you know, about a year out now. Well, it's going to depend. I mean, uh, uh, it's an odd enterprise that, that Bernier has set up. I mean, usually when new parties start up, it's because you have a number of people of like mind, you have a compelling... Um, issue or agenda, you have a crisis point where this like has to... Like the block to, we talked about. Where this has to, yeah. Or the reform party. And or you have some uh, monumental leader who everyone just follows around. Okay. Uh, at this point, it's not clear that there's any of that involved <laughs> here. Uh, it, it does appear at this point as being essentially a personality vehicle for Maxime Bernier. Uh, and he's going to have to show in the weeks to come that it's something more than that, that they have actual policies, that they are able to raise funds, that they have candidates and supporters. Mm. And so far, the jury is very out. If, if they're able to produce all that, I wouldn't necessarily underestimate them because we're even seeing already in the polls some, some at least um, curiosity about mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. higher numbers than I expected, to be frank on that. Really? But don't so, also forget the, the X factor here, or the max factor, which is angry conservatives. There's always been about a third of the base. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to go anywhere, but bristled under Stephen Harper for all those years, yeah. wanting to see the party go yeah. more to the right, and, you know, we might see a boil over. You can't underestimate no, that. No, but Andrew Scheer is no Stephen Harper, as, as I no. think you've all pointed out in various and columns. Of yeah. those angry uh, conservatives are in the West, where the conservatives can afford to lose votes. Yeah. Um, NDP, Jagmeet Singh, where if, it doesn't seem like it's been a particularly good summer for him. To uh, no, with a, a lot of popular incumbents announcing already yeah. that yeah. They're, they're not running again when he would sorely need them, and the impression that he's not getting through. Two things: if there were a leadership review vote this fall, I believe he would lose it, and the dominant feeling that I've picked up, it's high in Quebec, but not yes. only there. It's not buyer's remorse, it's seller's remorse over yes. having let go Thomas mm -hmm. Mulcair at a time when the Liberals are so vulnerable on I... their handling of the oh, uh, He's going to send you an email tonight. Oh, he was walking on a cloud. <laughs> I've seen him this week. The, the, the interview with him on TV the other day. Uh, the Democrats, I tried to stop you from dumping Mulcair, but you never listened. <laughs> Shachi, what do you make of where the NDP is? All is not lost. Let's just remember we have we have written off politicians in the past and they live and to, to see another day. But let's let's be real. Look, this has not <laughs> been a good rookie right. year for Jagmeet Singh. <laughs> no. Uh, look, the, the hand wringing about what if he loses this by election in Burnaby, I don't think that's going to happen. That is as solid a uh, an orange, I was about to say red, an orange <laughs> seat as I've seen. It used to be part of Sven Robinson's writing, Peter Julian had part of it for a long time. I don't see him losing it. What happens after, though? He has been out jug by Justin Trudeau. He is the, the, the left flank of the party has been so squeezed. They pulled that Pharmacare uh, piece out of the playbook. And so where does he go? How does he distinguish himself? And what is his articulated message on pipelines? These become the issues if he pulls it out. You have five seconds on check me. Uh, usually when a party loses in trouble, you can, you can sort of get MPs to talk about it reluctantly. These times, they'll <laughs> take you aside. They'll, they'll grab you and say, I want to tell you about my feelings about Jack yes. They ask you up for dinner. OK. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We kicked off at issue in style. I appreciate it. Good news for all of you who love politics as much as we do. This is also a podcast. So if you want to hear all these smart people again, be sure to subscribe. You'll get extra content. And of course, the main podcast in, in podcast form every week. iTunes, any major podcast app, our website, cbcnews.ca slash the national.